Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be exploring some of the new functionalities on Notebook LM. So if you're interested, come and join me while I explore some of the new functionalities. I would say that I probably use Notebook LM every day and I don't even have a subscription. It's totally free. So let's go. Okay, so I do have my VPN on. I'm in Hong Kong and uh, I don't have direct access to Notebook LM. And I wanted to unpack some of the research studies that I found on AI's influence on critical thinking and education. So I do have some studies here. There's a systematic review. Um, I will put the link. Let me just move myself over. I'm going to put the link to some of these uh, research papers in the comment section below. And I'm also going to provide the link to this particular notebook in the comment section below so that you can see the different studies. But, you know, there's a lot of controversy at the moment and discussion about how ChatGPT or any large language model can substitute critical thinking and offload the cognitive uh, engagement for students and for university students as well. So I think... So what we're going to do is have a little exploration into AI's influence on critical thinking and education. And while exploring these papers, we're going to have a look at some of the new functionalities that you can see here. So let me just close this so that you can see I've got five different sources here. Let me just move myself over again. And this is the summary that Notebook LM have come up with based on my five sources that I actually found uh, using Consensus, my other AI tool. So the provided sources primarily discuss the impact of AI, particularly Gen AI, like ChatGPT on critical thinking within the educational settings. One empirical study investigates the synergistic relationship between Gen AI and human intelligence, finding that Gen AI positively influences critical thinking this is interesting, by boosting self-efficacy, learning motivation, and decision-making among students. This quantitative research used a questionnaire with 165 students to support the idea that Gen AI can function as both a cognitive and thinking tool to enhance in-depth learning performance. Now, complementing this, two systematic literature reviews assess the wider adoption of AI, noting its potential to foster critical thinking by offering personalized feedback and facilitating argument analysis, especially in subjects like mathematics. So that's really interesting, getting that personalized feedback, not necessarily personalized learning, but the feedback right, on my understanding and on my work, facilitating argumentative analysis. However, all sources acknowledge significant risk and limitations. Uh, I imagine it's like cognitive offloading, uh, such as the potential for student over-reliance on AI, which could diminish cognitive abilities, absolutely, and the, uh, the necessity for clear ethical guidelines to combat issues like plagiarism and misinformation. So again, I think it's about teaching students how to use the AI tool to enhance their learning and enhance their critical thinking and not to offload the cognitive engagement, right? So let's get, well, audio overview has been there for a long time. Video overview has been here for a long time. Are the mind maps been here for a long time? Let's click on the reports. Okay, generate reports based on your sources. So let's just press this and see what happens. I can't, I pressed it. Oh, there we go. I just had to press it. Um, a little more vehemently. <laughs> um, okay, so format. Craft reports your way by specifying structure, style, and tone. Briefing document, which has got the key insights and quotes. Oh, I think I might go for that. Study guide, so short answer quiz. This is actually really comprehensive. A blog post. Oh, that's really good because I do share my opinions through my blog posts based on different research articles. And of course, 
I would generate that and then put my own voice into it and my own writing style. So I might click on that one, have a look. Policy brief, a brief on integrating AI into educational frameworks to enhance critical thinking. Amazing. Research synthesis, a synthesis of empirical studies on AI impact on cognitive development. An explanatory article, an article explaining how AI tools can either help or hinder. And then a concept explainer. This document clarifies key concepts about AI's role in developing thinking skills. This is they're, they're all good. But what's something that I would use? Because you know how I uh, really encourage the thoughtful uh, process and the thoughtful use of AI tools in a meaningful way so that we're not wasting resources, we're not creating AI slop, you know, AI outputs that actually don't have any meaning or any practical use. But I think the blood blog post. So let's go here. So do I just click here? Here we go. Blog post. It's already done it. Describe the report. Oh, okay. So it hasn't done it yet. It's given me a prompt. So let me go through this prompt and change this so that it's actually more my authentic voice. Thoughtful writer and synthesizer of ideas. Sure. Okay, this is good so far. For a popular online publishing pub, I don't know how popular my blog post is, but okay, we're going to keep that there. For a clean, aesthetic, and insightful content, your goal is to distill the top, most surprising, counterintuitive, or impactful takeaways from the provided source materials into a compelling listicle. Okay. Uh, the writing style should be clean, accessible, highly scannable, employing a conversational yet intelligent tone. Okay. I might say intelligent, authentic. I like to be authentic. Okay, I'm going to add authentic tone. Craft a compelling, click-worthy headline. Sure, okay. Begin the article with a short introduction that hooks the reader by establishing a relatable problem of curiosity. Then present each of the takeaway points as a distinct section with a clear, bolded heading. This is pretty good. This is to do with the layout now. Within each section, use short paragraphs to explain the concept clearly. And don't just summarize, offer a brief analysis. Exactly. I want an analysis. I just don't want the regurgitation of what the actual research article says, but I want an analysis or a reflection on why this is important uh, and so interesting. It, it, and uh, if a powerful quote exists in the sources, feature it uh, in a block quote for emphasis. This is actually a really good prompt that I could copy and paste and use all the time. Conclude the post with a brief forward looking summary that leaves the reader with final thought provoking question or a powerful takeaway or to ponder. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better prompt. That's probably how I structure my blog articles anyway. So let's generate this. Generating the report based on the five sources. And the good thing about Notebook LM is, as far as I understand, it doesn't share any of the data in its training. So it's a closed, housed kind of system where I put all of the sources that I want Notebook LM to analyze and only draws upon those sources, those authentic sources. And a lot of the time it will give me links within my sources so that I can verify and I can cross check. That's what I love about it. And I would say like while this is generating, because I don't know how long this is going to be, um, I actually use this every day. I, I would go here. I've got so many folders when the new NYP enhanced um, program uh, details were released for 2027. I put all the documents in. I read them, studied them. Now, I'm not saying it's a substitute and don't look at the original documents. I think you still have to verify, look at the original documents with the links that Notebook LM gives you. But like, what a great way for me to have a folder with everything on the enhanced NYP or a folder like this, which is AI's influence on critical thinking thinking and education, because I think a lot of the naysayers um, of using AI in education is that it's a substitute for critical thinking, and there's a lot of uh, offloading in terms of the cognitive engagement, and, you know, there's research that actually counters that and says that, of course, we can support the development of critical thinking and, and actually use these AI tools to improve our understanding, our knowledge and understanding of different areas. Now, this has already gone for about a minute. So what I'm going to do is hit the pause button in case this is going to take 15 minutes so you don't have to worry and wait here. Uh, okay, I'm going to hit the pause button and I'll see you in a little while. Okay, I'm back and that took three minutes actually. So I thought it was going to take a long 10 minutes or so, but it didn't. So, oh, 
Dumber or Deeper? Okay, that is a pretty good title, I must say.、Uh, I think I'm going to go through this, edit this with my ideas, and publish this as、uh, a blog article on my website. But let's just have a little look at this. Dumber or Deeper? That, that's actually very catchy, I must say. Five counterintuitive truths about AI and critical thinking. Okay, now I don't want to read the whole blog out to you, but maybe I'll just read out the 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 main ideas and the and the headings. Dumb or deeper? Okay, AI doesn't just replace thinking; it amplifies it for the prepared mind. That I think encapsulates such an important idea. It's the prepared mind. It's not the cognitive offloading, but it's like using it right to be able to enhance my critical thinking and and give me a thought partner. Um, okay, so that you know paragraph is pretty good. Yeah, we're not going to be passive consumers, and I've got to read this actually. However, a 2025 quasi experiment by Zhao et al. reveals a powerful multiplier effect. The study found that using generative AI can significantly amplify the in-depth learning effects for students who already possess higher levels of critical thinking skills. So, for a student with strong analytical and evaluation skills, so that means we actually have to develop that skill within our students and teach them how to use the AI tools properly. You know that that that's a skill in itself, and I think that that's an important point that we really need to make about AI tools. Remember, AI tools are inanimate objects. And they're not good or bad in themselves. It's how we use them and how we teach our students to use them, so that it is amplifying their critical thinking. All right. So the next heading: it's becoming less about what you know and more about how you think. Wow, that's really, I think, a powerful one. And then what is it?、Uh, let me just have a quick read. Okay, the same study. However, delivered a truly inspiring finding. Okay, what is it? When generative AI was introduced into the learning process, the significant impact of a student's prior knowledge on their in-depth learning performance disappeared. In practical terms, this means Gen AI can act as a great equalizer, providing the necessary background information, definitions, and context on demand. This levels the playing field, making a student's pre-existing knowledge base less of a barrier. To tackling complex new ta-、uh, uh, topics, okay. So UDL then, right? Removing barriers to learning. Okay. The next heading: the path to sharper thinking is indirect. AI builds confidence and motivation first, and and don't we want that? So I can see the study had a significant positive influence. Gen A had a positive influence. Self-efficacy, learning, motivation, decision making. And then the next heading: the most important skill isn't using AI; it's questioning it. Beautiful. This is a really good、uh, blog article, I must say, based on the sources.、Um, I am going to edit it because I want my authentic voice. I feel like this is sounding a little bit like a research paper, and I like to infuse a lot of my stories and my personal experience. So here, I may be talking about the builder story. Uh, let me share that story with you now. So imagine, you know, you invite a builder to your house to come and fix your roof. They get their huge hammer out and they inadvertently lodge this massive hole in your roof. Are you going to blame the builder or are you going to blame the hammer? It's not the AI tools that are bad. It's how we're going to teach our students to use them properly. Um, and then conclude. Okay, the hidden danger efficiency can mask a lack of understanding. So great. Okay, so there's a bit of controversial counterpoint there. And then conclusion: mastering the tool, not being mastered by it. These are really great headings. And、uh, I'm just going to read the last sentence here. As AI becomes a permanent fixture in learning, the essential question for educators, parents, and students is no longer should we use this technology, but rather are we cultivating the critical thinking skills needed to master the tool before the tool masters us? Brilliant! I, I, oh, th- this is absolutely brilliant. I love this. So,、um, yep, you'll be hearing、uh, from me when I share. On、uh, social media, this blog post, but of course with my authentic voice. Now that was just exploring one of the new functionalities in the language、uh, in Notebook LM.、Uh, I'm going to look at the other ones, I think, in future videos because this video is starting to get a little bit long.
but um you know let's uh next time look at I'm not a fan of flashcards, but I'm going to have a look anyway. I'm not a fan of quizzes, but let's have a look anyway, because, it's you know, there's a time and place for a quiz, right? And then the report section, there were so many different options. So next time I'm going to have a look at that. So that was me just exploring one of the functionalities, the new functionalities on Notebook LM. And that was creating a blog post based on all of the sources that I gave it. Uh, in terms of AI and, and looking at the development of critical thinking skills and not using AI to substitute uh, it, critical thinking skills, basically. Um, there were so many other options there in creating reports. So I think I'm going to make another video just to explore them and, and uh, let's see how exciting um, or let's see how engaging Notebook LM is and how practical it is for us educators to use in our own context and not just ed educators. I think um, I've asked my husband to use it. He's doing uh, his doctorate at the moment and research. And because each folder has up to 50 sources, we can put a whole lot of research papers on a particular theme and then we can interact and ask questions and ask for distillations on on that particular theme so notebook lm thank you for giving us this tool for free uh and um it's just so powerful let me know if you've used any of the other functionalities the uh, the new functionalities that have been released on notebook lm i'd love to hear from you please put it in the comment section below Thank you so much for joining me this week and I hope to see you next time.